Promo Cat here with a look at the next episode of the Friday Zone. Can you imagine sitting around enjoying your French toast sticks when all of a sudden you get threatened by a honked off cobra? He's camera ready. Yeah. <laughs> he is, he's always camera ready. Because of Zarg's dyslexia. Dyslexia. I, yes, that. Mm -hmm. Zarg needs to learn at his own pace. And out. Do you feel the heat? Yes, now we're gonna be lizards. So check out the next episode of The Friday Zone, right meow. Production support for The Friday Zone is provided by... The WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Friday Zone, everyone. I'm Maya. And I'm Matt. Hey, Matt, you know what's even worse than finding a worm in your apple? Finding half a worm. Well, we'll get Matt taken care of, but everyone else, get ready to creep and crawl with us today. We've got a famous story about a cobra, and we'll be lizards with animal yoga. But first, a baby snake on the Friday Zone playlist. In the Friday Zone Friday. I have a sad, sad story I'll tell it in a song I found a baby python In the woods behind my home I kept it in a coffee can underneath my bed I walked my baby daily on a leash made out of thread For seven months I kept this up, dreaming of the day Of walking and a show and tell with a ten foot python snake But I made a big mistake, or small one I should say My baby snake is just a worm that just checked, it is confirmed By now he should be slinking All he does is squirm My baby snake he is just a worm My friend and I made a snake cage From chicken wire and sticks We worked all weekend on it This news just makes us sick Cause that cage won't keep a worm in Never could, never will a worm will squirm right through it and disappear into the silk. Now my friend, he's got a fishing pole and a look I've never seen. And he wants to take him fishing, if you know just what I mean. My baby snake is just a worm. The vet just checked, it is confirmed. By now he should be slithering around. But all he does is squirm, my baby snake. Is just a worm. I don't just want a baby snake, I need it. And when I get a real one, at least I have something. Feeding. No, I'm just kidding about that. But 
But my baby's name is just a worm. My vet just checked, it is confirmed. Right now he should be slinking, but all he does is squirm. My baby's name, he's just a worm. My baby's name is just a worm. Yes, he is. My baby's name is just a little old. Hello again, everybody. I'm your host, Leo D. Cook, and welcome to Masterpieces of Children's Literature in less than a minute. You may be wondering why I'm sitting in this jungle. Good question. Well, today's story is one of many from the Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. Now, in this story, the main character is a mongoose named Ricky Ticky. Tavi. Not to be confused with a previous episode with that kid named <sighs> Ricky Ticky Tembo No Saw Rembo Chari Bar Ruchi Pip Perry Pembo. Now, do you know what a mongoose is? Mongooses are scrappy little mammals located in Africa and Asia. Don't be scared. That was only a sound effect. Like I mentioned before, Ricky Ticky Tavi is a mongoose who lives with a British family and he's become their household pet. His job is to protect the family against cobras, one of the meanest and deadliest snakes in the world. Tiki likes to spend time in the garden where he becomes pals with other creatures that hang out there. He is warned though about two cobras named Nag and Naginia who are pretty dang upset because the family presence in their neck of the jungle. You see, the cobras wanted to lay their cobra eggs there. One night, Ricky is mining his own beeswax when Nag, the cobra, slinks into the house to attack the family, and they have an altercation. So Nag is out of the picture permanently. As you can imagine, Nagania is pretty cheesed off about this and seeks revenge. She hatches an evil plan to go after the family as they're having breakfast. Now, can you imagine sitting around enjoying your French toast sticks when all of a sudden you get threatened by a honked off cobra? Talk about an unbalanced breakfast. So, Nagania is about to go after the family, but Ricky pulls the old switcheroo and goes into the cobra's nest and destroys all the unhatched eggs except for one. This sets up a clash between Ricky and Nagania. If you want to know what happens next in this epic showdown between a brave mongoose and a cheesed off cobra, I suggest you read the story of Ricky Tiki Tavi in the Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. You'll be glad you did. I'm Leo D. Cook, and I'll see you next time on Masterpieces of Children's Literature in less than a minute. Welcome back. We're connecting with our friend Sarah from Wild Care, an animal rescue group that provides professional care to sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife so that they may be returned to the wild. Hi, Sarah. Hi. How are you? Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. <laughs> Who are you introducing us to today? Today, I'm introducing you to Jasper the corn snake. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, that's awesome. He's so cute. There we go. Oh, wow. He's so pretty. So he how can you tell that he's a corn snake? Um, he is a corn snake. We can tell by his coloring and the patterns on his scales. Um, corn snakes are very similar to many of the snakes that are native to Indiana. Um, we rehabilitate uh, native snakes here. Um, and most of the native snakes in Indiana are non-venomous. So they're 
not in any way harmful to people. In fact, they're very beneficial. Um, snakes like corn snakes got their name because they're often found in corn cribs. Oh, wow. And, um, People used to think that they ate corn, but of course they don't. They eat mice that uh, infest uh, barns and corn cribs. So <laughs> what Jasper's demonstrating for us right now is how he uses his sense of touch to mm -hmm. explore the world. Um, snakes don't really have a very strong um, sense of vision. Um, they can see, but it's not their primary way of exploring. They actually use their sense of smell. You can see he uses oh his gosh. tongue to kind of smell things. Wow. Um, but he also uses his sense of touch. As you can see, he's all kind of balled up in my hand like this. And mm -hmm. that makes him feel secure. He knows who I am, but he's a little bit confused about the, um, <laughs> about you guys, about <laughs> the screen that's in front of us and why it's, why it's sitting there. He's really interested in um, what the screen is sitting on. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's so when, cool. He is a really cool snake, very cute little guys. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> he likes the camera now, he's camera ready. Yeah. <laughs> he is, he's always camera ready. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I would love to visit sometime and get to hold him. That'd be awesome. Yes, you're more than welcome. Oh. Do you have any other snakes? We do. Um, I can go get Yindi the snake. Oh, awesome. I will be, I will be right back. Perfect. So this is our little snake area here at Wild Care. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so what's the snake's name? This is Yindi. Oh it's my gosh. It's spelled Y-I-N-D-I. -I. Nice to meet Yindi. you. <laughs> Wow. Her around, and she is about five feet long. Oh my um, gosh. That's my height. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she doesn't quite have the muscles to stand up and, and compare, but I'm sure if you guys laid down, Yindi loves to be on the floor. Mm. And that's something that's unique to her species. Wilma pythons are actually from uh, Australia. And oh, wow. They're, they're unique among pythons because, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of a ball python. It's a popular pet species, but they have these little holes in the top of their jaw. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Those are called heat pits, and those are typical for pythons. But for a Woma python like Yindi, there's no heat pit. Hmm, and what are those for? Do, those are for uh, seeking out their prey. So it's like a, a heat detection system. Wow. So they can find warm blooded animals to eat. Um, but Yindi uh, doesn't have those. And it's part of uh, her overall, she's just kind of chilling. <laughs> she is so um, chill. She is very chill. It's part of their overall strategy. And part of why she is so chill is because she doesn't seek out prey. She actually lures it to her. Mm. Um, and she uses the edge of her tail, looks a little bit like a worm. <laughs> she buries herself in the ground, one of the reasons she likes the floor. Um, she buries herself and just leaves this out as a little piece of bait. And oh. um, yes, when a bird or a small mammal comes along to eat this delicious looking worm, uh, she will take just one brief moment to uh, incapacitate her prey and eat them. Oh, wow. So she's a very, her species is a very passive uh, passive hunter. So that ends up uh, influencing their overall temperament, even in snakes that have never been in the wild. They still have that same temperament of, I'm just gonna lay back. Aren't wow, you? that's awesome. Um, like we learned with uh, Jasper, they do use their sense of touch to explore the world because their vision is not quite um, as useful to them as it is to us. Um, but Yindi is also kind of showing us, are you gonna do it again? She doesn't sniff as much as Jasper does, but the <laughs> reason why they flick their tongue is actually for smell. Wow. Um, they, have a, they have a little organ on the top of their mouth that, um, on the roof of their mouth, I should say. And when they flick their tongue, they're getting little um, particles from the air 
and then rubbing them up on the uh, roof of their mouth to sort of taste the air. And that's basically them smelling. Wow, um, that's so cool. So we actually, yeah, we actually have um, rules about where we can take the snakes in our facility because we don't want them um, near where food is prepared because they can smell it and we don't want them to get confused mm -hmm. and smell mm, tasty mouse. It's time to chomp on something. <laughs> that but makes course, sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Snakes gotcha. are not not at all interested in or looking to... Oh, there we go. Are we smelling a little bit? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. That's you so cool. You can't smell through the camera, Andy, but she'll, she'll try. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for all this information. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your snakes with us. We'll be right back. Give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home. This old man, he played three. He played three. He played knick-knack on my knee with a knick-knack patty whack. Give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what is the silliness? What is the, a knick-knack? And what is a patty whack? Peggy, you are making no sense. Well, a knick-knack is the practice of playing the spoons and uh, tapping out of rhythm on your knee. Uh, and what about paddywhack? Paddywhack means to paddle sheep bones. So together, knick-knack and paddywhack means that the old man was playing sheep bones like one might play the spoons. Oh, okay. Zarg is done. <laughs> Zarg has added, and Zarg has subtracted, and Zarg is subtracting himself from the equation. <laughs> Zarg, wait, please don't go! Why? Why should Zarg stay? Uh, Peggy is treating Zarg like he knows nothing. Oh, no, but I... Zarg knows, knows many things I Peggy know. does not know about. Shadowlings <laughs> and trolls and gnomes, and especially about the Dark Lord, Edgar Allen. But... Mm. You're right, Zarg. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. If you stay, I'll read you a poem. What type of poem? A ghost poem. A ghost poem? Yes, Zark. Come here and I'll show you. No more tricks? No more tricks. Cross my heart. Stick a needle in Peggy's eye? Stick a needle in my eye! Well... Okay, then. Peggy girl child, uh, Zark appreciates what you were trying to do. It's, it's, it's just... It's just uh, because of Zarg's dyslexia. Dyslexia. Uh, yes, that. Mm -hmm. Zarg needs to learn at his own pace. I understand, Zarg, and I'm sorry if I was pushing you. It's okay, Peggy girl. Ghost Music by Robert Graves. Oh, I like his name. Very dark and doomy gloomy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gloomy and bare the organ loft, mm. bent back and blind the organist, from rafters looming shadowy, from the pipes tuneful company, drifted together drowsily, innumerable, formless, dim, the ghosts of long dead melodies, of anthems stately, thunderous, of curie shrill and tremulous, in melancholy, drowsy, sweet, they huddled there in harmony, like bats at noontime, rafter hung. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Welcome to Animal Yoga. My name is Priscilla, and I'm here to practice yoga together with you. Let's take a deep belly breath in and check how are we feeling in this very moment. Now bring our hands in front of our hearts. Namaste. Ready to begin?
today we are gonna be lizards. <laughs> Did you know, I think lizards and dragons are kind of similar. And it, the dragons, they have breath of fire, right? They breathe fire. So let's learn how to do that. This is a really great breath for us when we have low energy. When we are like sick or not feeling like doing anything, it's a great one for us to get a lot of energy. Shall we try that one? So only using our nose, we are gonna breathe in and out really quickly. Put your hands on your belly and you see the belly moving really fast like this. And now let's take a deep breath in, bring your hands up and out. Do you feel the heat? Yes, now we're gonna be lizards. We're gonna go on our hands and knees like this. Hands under our shoulders and knees under our hips. And make sure your hands, your palms are touching the floor. Palms touching. And we're gonna tuck our toes under and we're gonna make our legs really long. Can you make your legs really long? Our hips are make, making a long line between our heads and our heels. So neither down or up, but right in the middle. And this makes us really strong. Do you feel like how strong your arms are? So now let's do the, the breath of fire. <gasps> Very good. Now let's hide on the rocks. Let's be rocks and hide. Now your rocks and feel your breath and rest. Thank you for joining me. May all be peaceful. May all be well. May all be happy. Namaste. Welcome back. Let's check in with Megan in the Fresh Time Market Kitchen to see what's cooking. Hi, Megan. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me today. It's our pleasure. <laughs> so Mother's Day and Father's Day is right around the corner. And for those of you who have a special mother figure or father figure in your life, do I have a treat for you? Who likes pancakes? Oh my God. I love pancakes. They're so good. <laughs> I love them too. And for anybody else who's watching who does, I have a very special pancake recipe for you guys today. I see what you did there. <laughs> So today we're making uh, berry sheet cake pancakes. Now this recipe does take a little bit of time. The good news is that you can actually make it ahead of time where you can bake it ahead and just reheat it on a Mother's Day or Father's Day. Um, you also could freeze it and reheat it for another time too. So there's a couple ways you can go about it. But to make this sheet pan, the first thing you need to do is include all of your dry ingredients. So you wanna mix them. So here I have two uh, cups of all-purpose flour, a half cup of oats. I have three tablespoons of sugar. I have two tablespoons of cinnamon, and I have a teaspoon each of baking soda, baking powder, and salt. And you're gonna mix those well. Great. Okay. So once you have your dry ingredients well mixed, the next thing you wanna do is mix your wet ingredients. So in our wet ingredients, we have two cups of buttermilk. We have two eggs, three tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna mash two bananas. Now you're probably wondering why yeah, is that? Yeah, why would you do bananas? <laughs> so if you notice in our dry ingredients, we only have three tablespoons of sugar to make an entire sheet pan here. So bananas are a natural sweetener. Plus they have mm. all kinds of other nutrients like potassium and prebiotics that really help with healthy digestion. So it's a really easy way to naturally sweeten your pancakes, but also add extra nutrients. That's great. So we're gonna add two ripe bananas. The more yellow with brown spots, the better. So we're gonna go ahead and add those into our wet ingredients here. And with a fork, you're just going to nicely mash them, okay? And that's gonna mix in with the eggs and the butter and your um, milk, okay? So now that we have these nicely mashed, we're going to then add our liquid mixture to our dry mixture, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add this in here. That batter already looks sure. super good. It's 
smells really good. I wish you could be in my kitchen right now. Oh, I wish. That would be so much fun. <laughs> so we're just going to mix this together. Now, while you're mixing these ingredients and getting everything together, you do want to make sure that you have preheated uh, your oven to 425. And you also want to make sure that you use a sheet pan and you want to coat it in your favorite oil. Now, I'm actually going to use coconut oil because our temperature on our oven is really high and this is a high temp oil so it's not going to burn or make a, an odd flavor with your pancakes it's also kind of sweet and the pancakes are sweet so so it good works mix. perfectly exactly so now that we have our batter we're going to go ahead and pour it onto our sheet pan and take that and just really fill the entire pan best you can with this delicious mixture. Oh, the cinnamon, the bananas, this is going to be delicious. Okay, so then you're gonna take your mixture and pop it in the oven and cook it for about 25 to 30 minutes till it's done. Now, this is the final product. And you're probably Ooh. wondering, what else is on here? Yeah. <laughs> so this is where you want to use your toppings. So you could easily add your blueberries, strawberries, or bananas to the top. If you wanted to bake them in there, you could take your blueberries and sprinkle them on top and mix them in. But I absolutely love the more fruit, the better, the different colors, the more nutrients, and the more delicious it is. Awesome, so Megan, when you have make these pancakes and they're right out of the oven, what else do you like to put on your pancakes? Uh, I love syrup. <gasps> Can't have pancakes without syrup. I agree. And I love maple syrup. So maple syrup, it's a natural sweetener. It also has different nutrients that are beneficial to our body. So a little goes a long way, but I like to sprinkle it with that. If you're really getting fancy, you could always do like a coconut whip, like a coconut whipped cream as a dollop on top and really wow those parents of yours. Oh my gosh, I had no idea about that maple syrup. That <laughs> it's tasty and like really healthy for you. So, well, exactly. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, thank y'all for joining us on the Friday Zone. And thanks again to Megan from the Fresh Time Market for joining us today. You can find all sorts of fun recipes and ideas at freshtime.com. And our website is fridayzone.org. Or find us on social media at the Friday Zone. And remember to live, learn, and play the Friday's own way. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Do you cool cats have the perfect idea for the Friday Zone? Want to share a hobby? Or let us know what's happening in your town? Then contact us on our website at FridayZone.org or send an email to zone at indiana.edu right meow.